Hi guys, it's Don Chazzy here again with another episode of University Cooking and today, because it's winter and it's cold outside and we've got that snow on the floor and the ice is building up overnight, I'm going to cook something very homely, nice and warm, full of calories to keep us warm and that is minced beef wellington. Sounds a bit funny and a bit... but trust me, it'll be nice and yummy. Let's go down to Little D to see what we need for this lovely recipe. Thanks, Big D. What you're going to need to make this yummy minced beef wellington is one medium onion, white, one carrot, one potato, sort of medium size, not too big, two cloves of garlic, four sprigs of rosemary, and you want to take the leaves off the sticks, five hundred grams of minced beef, one large egg, a nice big handful of frozen peas, and last but not least, 500 grams of puff pastry. Let's get started, Big D. Thanks, Little D. What else you'll need is just a little bit of flour to line the roller and the surface that you're rolling the puff pastry on, and some salt and pepper to season the meal. Let's get started. So the first thing you want to do is preheat the oven to 180 degrees. Now that's gas mask four. Okay, so with your potato, your onion, and your carrot, you want to chop them up into one centimeter squared type cubey type things. So I mean, with with the with the carrot, I just chop it in half and then chop it like downwards, and the rest just centimeter cubes. Okay, so after you've chopped your vegetables, you want to get your garlic and you want to crush it with a garlic crusher. Now if you don't own a garlic crusher then use a grater or just chop it up really finely with your knife. Okay, after you've chopped all your vegetables up you want to get a frying pan, put it on a medium to, to low heat, put a few plugs of olive oil in just to help the vegetables fry. Now when the, the oil's got hot, bung your vegetables in, all of them, your garlic, your onions, your potato, your carrot, all of it. You also want to be adding your thyme to this recipe now. Um, if you've got fresh thyme, you want about four sprigs of it, you want to chop it up and then add it. If you've got dry thyme like I have here, you want to put about two teaspoons in. Once you've fried your, your vegetables for about eight minutes or until they become translucent and soft and nice, you want to add your handful of frozen peas. Now this is quite a big handful. Mix them in and cook them for about one minute extra. After about one minute from adding the peas, you want to put your vegetables into the bowl that you're going to mix your minced beef in as well and leave it there to cool down completely. Next you want to get your egg, crack it into a bowl and beat it up, making sure the yolk breaks and it all becomes one mixture. The next step of the process is to add your minced beef to the to the vegetables, add a good pinch of pepper, a good pinch of salt and you also want to add half of the egg that you beat up and just get your hands dirty and just mush it all up, make sure everything mixes together, everything just gets all in. Now make sure that you do this when the vegetables have cooled down because you could really burn yourself if you do it straight away. Once your mixture has been all mixed up and nicely together, put it to one side just to settle together. So next what you want to do is you want to dust a surface with some flour, so put some on the surface, just rub it around make sure you've got a lot of flour. Get your rolling pin and just rub it in the flour. Make sure it's really covered in flour so that nothing sticks to it. You also want to make sure that you've kept your puff pastry in the refrigerator whilst you are preparing the meat and the vegetables so that it doesn't stick. To ensure that the puff pastry puffs up you do not want to scrunch it into a ball or anything because then these layers here will be unlayered and thus the puffing up won't happen anymore. So you want to roll it up, be quite firm with it, you need to work quickly with it, you don't want it to warm up too quickly whilst you're working on it. Keep flipping it over, making sure there's flour everywhere it touches. And you want to make it about the size of a tea towel. Once your pastry's rolled out, you want to get your 
mince meat mixture and just put it along the long edge like a big sausage. Make sure you've got a little bit of room at the ends so that it can be closed off. You then want to get a pastry brush and just brush egg around the outside corners of the pastry. Now if you don't have a pastry brush just use your finger, it's fine. You don't want to use all of this um, egg, just a bit of it. Now what you want to do is you want to roll the mince up. Now this is quite hard so you want to make sure that your hands are not wet at all. And just get underneath it and then just roll it, roll it up. Now if your pastry is cold and kept cold then this is quite simple and quite hassle free. You want to sort of just crimp up the ends. Now if you see any gaps that are opening up just get a bit of egg, open it up a little bit, get a bit of egg in there and just close it up. Now after you've rolled it up get a baking tray and just put a little bit of flour on this baking tray just to make sure that it doesn't stick to the baking tray whilst it cooks. Or if you have any baking paper then use that as well, it's much easier. Now carefully lift your Wellington onto here, seam down preferably, and then just brush it with, with egg just to give it colour when it cooks. Use all the egg up, just go be generous here. After you've coated it in your egg yolk and egg white I suppose mix, you want to put it in your oven at 180 degrees for one hour until it becomes golden brown on top. So this is pretty much what it looks like out of the oven. Nice golden brown on the top, all the meat's cooked in the middle, make sure the meat is cooked. So if you cut it open, don't worry about putting it back in the oven until it's cooked in the middle. And I hope you enjoy it. And that's how you make minced beef wellington. Really simple, feeds about four to six people, so it's a whole flat again. So if you guys all put money in together, you're gonna, you know, it's, it's so cheap to eat like this. And it's cheaper than going out and buying a kebab or something, because a kebab's gonna cost you about three quid. That, all the ingredients, less than a fiver. So I hope you've enjoyed this week's University Cooking Show, guys. And don't forget to tune in next week for another easy and simple and cheap recipe for all you students out there. Thanks for subscribing and thanks for watching, guys. I'm Don Chazzy. Bye-bye.